Okay, so welcome everybody. This is the first of our training sessions for the Dell COVID project. Our aim today is to provide an introduction to those people who are new to Transmart. So we are loading all the data sets into a Transmart instance. Um, we're doing various duration steps, checking everything through, and then we're going to load data onto a public instance. And we'll have copies of that public instance available for use in the data farm from the 18th to the 20th. So this is the introductory talk. Uh, a lot of our attendees are in uh, different time zones, so it's probably difficult to attend. So we're expecting people to watch the, the recording later. And there'll be addresses in here so you can send any questions you have. We have a couple of people on live. OK. Quick introduction to Transmart for those who are new to it. Transmart started out as a software called ITB2, which began in 2005, looking at ways to store patient data, uh, integrating informatics, informatics for integrating biology in the bedside, storing up to millions of patients uh, from electronic health records. It was extended by um, pharmaceutical company and others uh, into software called Transmart, and they added data for clinical trials, gene expression data, for example, was an early addition. In uh, 2012, it was released as open source. And from 2013, various um, projects, particularly in Europe, adopted it as ways to manage uh, clinical trial data and gene expression data for uh, large scale projects in specific targeted areas. So IMI is a European project um, jointly between academia and pharmaceutical industry. Trait was a similar project in the Netherlands. The Transport Foundation was formed in 2013 to look after the open source software and all of us from those projects joined. It merged with ITB2 to form an ITB2 Transport Foundation in 2017. And last year ITB2 was released under an open source license as well. So now we're working with funding from Dell Technologies, looking at the integrating Transmart and ITB2, which have been diverging for the last uh, nearly 10 years, and putting them back together, and using Transmart to uh, manage data for COVID-19. So Transmart features the ability to hold clinical trial data. That can be information about the subjects of a trial, or it can be information about model organisms, or information about samples from cell lines. So the nature of the data in Transmart could be rather different to the nature of the data that we have in ITB2, which is maybe purely human. Expression data comes from GEO or uh, Cancer Genome Atlas or uh, various proprietary studies. It can be microarray expression, RNA-seq data, proteomics, and various other kinds when we're looking to extend the data types that Transmart can handle, so we're open to suggestions. You have a builder to create comparison queries in your data, so you can select patients, um, samples, cell samples or whatever is available. You can then run analysis workflows to look at the uh, properties of your data and export the results. So Transmart 19 is the current version. It was released in April this year. It's written in Grails. We've upgraded to a more recent Grails release and we will do more on that in the year to come. Uh, the code was fully reviewed by the guy who wrote the Grails book. So it's been well checked for um, things that you shouldn't do. The database is now fully compatible with ITB2, so we can install Transmart and then load ITB2 on the, the same database and work with it. The, the help manual's been completely rewritten, and we're looking at ways to automate it, automatically test and update. There are a choice of ways to get data into Transmart. Um, the, Kettle data integration is the standard way of doing it. Um, but there are other products from uh, Aravate, from the Hive, and from Sanofi that can also be used. And there are hundreds of publicly curated studies. Uh, that list is out of date because it doesn't include the 175 plus that we have on the, the COVID project. And there are various ontologies for genes, protein identifiers, and so on that can be added to it. So in Transmart, you see something like this for the 
the clinical data or the, the properties of the, uh, the cell lines. You get um, data which can be just text you see at the bottom, a series of strings, uh, cell types in this case. Um, and those are separate categories that can be used for analysis. You get numerical data, um, in this case, survival time in months, and you get high dimensional data. So this is gene expression data from a microarray. And you can select and work with those data in various ways. So for example, with the analysis, you can get a heat map out and I'll, I'll show a little bit more about how to do these uh, in a later set of slides. So we started the Transmart COVID project so that we can uh, gather data from COVID-19 and from related coronaviruses and then see what the community can do with an, the analysis of these and having them all in, in one place to do comparisons. So this is the core team. Uh, Keith Elliston is the, the um, founder of Axiomedics. I'm uh, working with Axiomedics and I'm also the core transmart developer and data loader. I wear various hats. Rudy Potenzone, who's also on the call, is uh, uh, co-PI for the project and he's the transmart um, product manager for the ICPC Transmart Foundation. And uh, Sami Temujan is our uh, clinical advisor in the project. So we're developing a public resource uh, for the data, curating the uh, gene expression data and other, other sources, looking to get communication contributions from the community, and this is the data farm, which is one of the primary goals of the uh, project. So we have 175 plus studies in uh, our database at the moment in various stages of curation. We get about five new studies a week on average. Uh, we also look after studies for SARS, um, the original coronavirus outbreak, and MERS Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which has been ongoing in the Middle East. Uh, and we picked up some data for a few other coronaviruses. There are some I'd particularly like to see, but there's very little research going on at the moment. And some related studies that tie in with these, uh, for example, effect of uh, um, respiratory viruses on lung cells, but from other viruses. So we have those there in case anybody would like to do comparison. So this is uh, the way that the SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19 virus studies look. Almost all of these are RNA-seq. Some of them are single cell RNA-seq when we um, massage those into keeping the cell types uh, and summarizing. Uh, but if anyone in the data form would like to look at the full-blown data, we can try loading that as well and see how it looks. For the older data from SARS, almost all of this was gene expression because that was the popular way to do expression data um, around the time of the SARS outbreak. And then for the, the MERS data, there's a mixture. It's half RNA-seq data for the more modern studies and half expression data using microarrays. So we have a mixture, uh, but the data looks fairly similar in transport either way. It's just that the duration of data loading expression data happens to be a lot easier to extract and load. So our server is actually running Transmart 19.1. We've made various extensions um, to improve the way that it can uh, handle the COVID data. And so those are live on our servers. There's a public um, server for the database curation which is the COVID staging server. And above that sort of references to the main public server, which we're about to populate. And uh, the staging server we will be repopulating in the next few days ahead of the, uh, the data form. So if you do look, you may or may not see data. We also have a, a library server, PM library, uh, which is where you can download any of the data sets. So if you install Transmart, you can download those data sets into your own instance and work with them. We'll be adding links to various uh, public resources and more on those in the, the second training session. And we'll be adding documentation for new users through our support site. Okay, we can see some acknowledgements there, which will come up again on the, the next talk where I'll take you through
plans map and uh, how that works. Any questions so far? Uh, so, Peter, are you going to show how to do the analysis? Is it included? Uh, I will point to the documentation on how to do individual analysis. So, you are going to give access to the platform, right? Uh, we'll, we'll explain that in the, the next one because I'm about to reload the data. No, I, I couldn't get you. Can you please repeat? We're, we're going to reload the data on the staging server and then load the public server. Okay, so that's okay. the, the time to start doing analysis. Okay. We're just getting people up to speed on the capabilities of, of Transform. Okay. So I'll take you through a, a guide to the features and capabilities of the Transform platform. You can browse through studies. We have documentation of uh, what's available in the public repositories for the studies that we've loaded and links to publications should there there be any publications, more recent studies on, so far unpublished. Show you how to look through the clinical and subject level data, how to select subsets, some examples of the sort of analysis that you can run, uh, a guide to how to export data. For the data form, we expect that in a lot of cases you'll be just exporting selected subset of the data and running your own analyses on them and links to where the documentation help support community forums can be found. <coughs> so when you go to Transmart, the first page you're presented with is uh, the browse page. Often it's empty, but we have uh, one of the advances in Transmart 19.1 is we have a way to distribute the browse tab data for all studies. So you can automatically load up and populate this, uh, this page with the metadata of the study. So we have expression data from Gene Expression Omnibus, which is a, a database at uh, NCBI, NIH. Uh, subjects can be animals or cell lines as well as uh, human subjects. Other high dimensional data from various omics projects um, can be sets of values for the, for the individual. So you have a gene expression set for each subject or possibly each cell line after infection, after six hours, 12 hours, and so on. So you get time periods and other treatments. In a clinical trial, you're dealing with just anonymized patients, but in, uh, in the data that we have in Transmart, it's often animals and cell lines as well. Uh, you find references to uh, GEO and to PubMed and the DI reference to the original published article uh, in the Browse tab. And it's built from the remaining metadata from the, the geo database or other sources. So here's an example, I hope reasonably visible. Every study has a, a unique identifier that's, that's used to pick it up within Transmart. It's built from the, the geo um, study identifier, in this case, which is GSE 150708. There's a description, which can be quite long in this case, it's quite short. Um, I picked a short one so I can show the rest on the screen. You can, for a pharmaceutical industry, you can mark the, the phase of clinical trials. It's generally not applicable for these sort of uh, expression studies that come out of research labs. There's a link to the original study in GEO where you can find this information and information about individual samples. We keep a note of the number of subjects and the number of samples. So in this case, there is one subject per sample, so you can basically see all the samples in the clinical view. That's not always the case. The organism is, is generally available there. Almost all of these are public access. And uh, there's the pub PubMed ID and the publication DOI that you can click on to uh, get more information. You can also get the, uh, the author list and the publication list, and most of these fields are searchable. So on the, the left, you have a set of programs, COVID-19 and coronavirus, you can see at the top, those expand into the studies that are available. The ones marked with a yellow star are the ones that have been loaded into Transmart. Uh, some you might find don't have the star yet while we're still loading because we load the browse tab data first. Okay. 
the technical and subject data is a, a tree of values for the subject. You had a, a quick view of that earlier. Um, on each, each row, there's also the number of subjects that match. So you can see whether something is covering all the subjects of the study or just a subset of them. Uh, for example, sometimes not all of the subjects have um, expression data, particularly for studies that are several studies put together. Uh, data types can be categorical strings, so male and female is commonly there for human trials. You can drag the male or the female values to select male and female individuals, uh, patients, mice, whatever species they are. Numerical values like age, you can select a, a range of ages. You can have all um, individuals below a certain age compared to all of those above that age. And for height dimensional data, you can drag um, the gene expression sets in and select um, high or low expression levels of genes of interest that might be markers that you're interested in, and then analyze those and see how the rest of the data behaves in samples with high and low levels of expression. So here's the view of the tree that we saw earlier. So at the bottom we have the, um, the text fields, the categorical values that you can drag to compare two different cell types. We have numerical data, so you can look at uh, those with uh, how long the patient survived without um, metastasis and, and run comparisons for this this particular study and the high dimensional data where you can select individual genes or you can use all the high dimensional data for uh, other analyses. There's a, a comparison tab where you can select the subset of uh, data that you want to work with. Um, you can either select just a subset to work on or for comparisons you can select two subsets and compare them to run for example heat maps or to compare on some of the, the graphical outputs. Some of the analyses only actually ask you for the study and then ask again, which is a little unfortunate. So you go to select all the information you want and then the, the analysis may ignore it. We're working on uh, trying to follow the information up and pass it through. Uh, you drag and drop the, the nodes into boxes in the tab. Numerical values will, will prompt you for a range and gene values will, will prompt you for the genes. And strings you can just drag in whichever strings you want to have. So the comparison tab, oops, went the wrong way. Comparison tab looks like this. So on the left, you have the, the tree that you can expand and select the values you want. You drag those into subset one and you can drag things into there and select male patients with an age range and so on in successive boxes. And if you need more than three boxes, it just expands. Uh, as you can add more below. And you can build two subsets for comparison. Having built your subset or your subsets, um, the next thing you would do is to look at a view of the information. So there are two views available. One is summary statistics, which just gives you a, an overview of basic data. It's built to mighty be two, so age, sex, and race are, are standard views in the summary statistics if you have it available, um, where age might be the age of a cell line. Uh, sex is sometimes available for mouse models, but often those, those fields are missing for cell lines and animal studies. It also, if you included other uh, nodes, survival times and so on in your query to build the subsets, those will appear in the summary statistics as well. And you can also see a summary by dragging in more nodes to the page. Then there's a grid view, which is just a table view. Um, you see all the values that have been used for the subsets. So you see only the um, subjects, samples, animals that, that have been selected by your search criteria. And you see only the, um, the properties that have been included in your subset. But you can drag further nodes in to the grid view and see them displayed for the same set of subjects and you can sort and hide the columns to clean up the view. So the summary statistics here, um, all our subjects in this case are female. Um, we've um, got half the samples have been infected with uh, SARS, 
and half of them have been treated with some other solution with no virus in. So you see the percentages uh, for that, and you see the proportions of male, female um, age group, uh, for age groups, you get a histogram for the subset or the subsets that you've selected. On the, uh, here's another one showing gene, ex uh, gene expression data. So at the top, we've got um, a race breakdown for this study. There's probably a sex breakdown above that as well. And at the bottom, we've taken uh, one gene, uh, PTPN21, uh, from uh, the lung high dimensional data node that's highlighted in blue. You can see a, a histogram of, uh, of the expression levels in the two subsets, and it's quite, quite divergent in this case. And on the right, you can see a box plot showing the expression levels that were found in the two subsets. I'm not sure what was actually selected as the subsets in this one. Right. But anyway, it, it may be that the two subsets have just been selected by expression levels for that gene, I suspect. Okay, so the grid view looks like this. On the, the left is the standard grid view. You can see um, the subject ID, which will be anonymized for human subjects and maybe some made up string for cell line models. Um, and the patient code, which again is anonymized and typically is, is just built up from the, the codes and the, um, the geodata. Uh, maybe some samples if they're available, uh, whether it's in subset one or two, and then the trial ID, the sex in this case is female, age and race are missing. Um, there are none of these were males, so only female is populated. And on the right, you can see uh, that you can um, sort columns. So you, you can sort columns in ascending or descending order. And if you click on the, the columns tab, you can then select which columns to display. So you can hide the male column, which is always empty in this case. And you can move columns around. And uh, get a view that can satisfy you that you've got the right set of subjects for analysis. Once you've got your subset or your subsets to analyze, you can then go on to, uh, we have advanced workflows. And this is the full set of analyses that are available in uh, Transmart. So um, we have uh, hybridization. Um, methods, we have box plots, various other plots, correlation, line graph, and scatter plot. Uh, principal component analysis, there's uh, survival and IC50 um, plots. And quite commonly, running the heat maps, just a standard heat map to compare, uh, to find the, the gene ex genes with differential expression between the two sets. They can be clustered hierarchically or by k means into a set number of clusters. And you can run marker selection and it will pull out the most significant uh, genetic markers from the analysis. I will show you later how to find the manual where there's examples of all of these um, information about the inputs to them and the outputs that you will get. So the, um, the heat maps look something like this, depending which option you choose. Um, you can't read the text, but along the bottom is the names of the, the samples. And Vertic on the, the right hand side is names of the probes, which usually will have the gene name in, but it depends on how the analysis was, how the uh, original data was generated. Usually, the, the last half of that is the gene name, and the first half is the probe ID. And you can save those graphs. And there's another analysis method I mentioned where you can actually interact with it and expand it much more easily. And so if you do the marker selection, you also get a tabular output that you can uh, export and save that shows you the, the gene symbols, the probe ID uh, from the gene expression study, and other values from that analysis, the log fold change in this case, the p-values. And possibly links to some external analyses. Um, those will probably be turned off for the, uh, the COVID server but we can try turning them off if anybody would like to try and see what's available. 
Smart R is the interactive analysis option. Um, it doesn't have all of the available analyses, so we keep the, the advanced workflows around as well. Uh, but there are a couple of new methods in there as well. And some of them combine multiple workflows. So there is one heat map in Smart R, but it does basically everything that the advanced workflow heat map options do. Uh, there are options to view and reanalyze the data. So with the advanced workflows, you have to go back and change your input and run the analysis again. But often in Smart R, you can mouse over and get much more information out of the, the result. But not all the advanced workflow methods are covered at the moment, but we are working with uh, versions of them that we can try to import. So if anybody needs one of those in Smart R, I can try to dig it out and try to do it on the fly in the data phone. That's a bit challenging, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, for the data that we're planning, everybody will have their own transport instance for the groups they're working in, so we can play with one without disrupting everyone else's. So Smart R looks like this. This is a, a box plot uh, view of various sets of genes. And on the right, you can see if you mouse over, you see the, the range values pop up. Whereas if you do that with the advanced workflows, you just get the graph as a flat image. You can also export data. Uh, you can export the, the results from the R analysis, but you can also export just the data sets that you've selected. Um, and so for the data from quite often you'd want to select your subset of uh, data within Transmart and then just say, can I export it? You go to the data export page and you will see the subset you've selected pops up on the page. You can um, extract, export the data as tab separated files. You can export just the, the clinical properties or you can export the uh, gene expression data. Uh, and you can drag other information in to expand the, the um, columns that you get in the, the clinical data. So clinical data will look like the grid view. You will see the, a row for every subject that you've selected and a column for every, uh, every node from the tree that you've dragged in. You can get the file in the browser. There's a download option to just download it to your uh, workstation, wherever you're working from. Um, the file, of course, also exists on the Transmart server, so we can get it there as well and copy it somewhere if you need to do that. Um, also, um, links to the original data. So it is also possible to go to Geo and download the Geo study. So if you go to Geo, you will see um, typically one file that has all the subjects and expression data. If they've used more than one method of getting expression, there's one file for each method. Um, but that gets you gene expression data quite comfortably. For RNA-seq data, it's a mess. What you will get for RNA-seq data is typically a tar file that expands to a bunch of gzip files, which expand to a bunch of files that may have been dumped out of all. Uh, the subject uh, names don't match the subjects in the rest of the data, but you can generally figure out where things go. And that's the reason why the RNA-seq data has been harder to curate than the, the gene expression data. But that way you will have uh, maybe some background information and you can do some reanalysis and renormalization of the data for the study and just use Transmart to tell you which samples are the best ones to, to pick. Um, you can export the, sam the sample IDs from Transmart and then select them from the raw data. So it would be very interesting to see from the data on what other analyses people come up with uh, working with this data. This is the data export page. And so here we've selected a, a cohort of 12 patients. I think that was all the patients in the study. Uh, and then we've dragged in the study group and the cell line and uh, the treatments that were used. And uh, those will appear in the downloaded clinical data. And then for those 12 subjects, you will also get the set of uh, expression data. So you you click on uh, an export button on the page that's just off the edge of the screen here and uh, download the data. For documentation, there's a, a manual which was new in Transmart 19, far better than the, the previous help. Um, I noticed in preparing these slides that the data export isn't in the manual, so I will add pages for that and put those up on the server um, by the time we, we run the data from. Um, 
and there are links on uh, most of the page, most of the screens in Transart link to the relevant section in the documentation, or you can go to the utilities manual top right in Transart and click on help and you'll get into the manual and then there's a contents page and an index down the side that gets you to where you want to be. Also on Axiomedics' support platform, which we'll be using for the data farm, uh, you'll see on the front page is the user manual and that links to a, um, a copy of the uh, Transport user manual split into sections with the same images. And also for developers, if you're interested in what's going on with Transport in the future, you can go to the ITP2 Transport Foundation wiki, uh, wiki.transportfoundation.org, where we keep um, information about how to install the latest Transport release and uh, the developments that we're looking into for the future. The support Axiomedic has a, a support site that's based uh, built on Zendesk. Again, if you just go to transportsupportaxiomedics.com, that's the same address as um, finding the manual. You'll see all the articles, you can search the articles, and if you sign in, you can just sign in with Google or Twitter, just anything that identifies you, and then click discussion, and you can see the community forum, and um, that's where we'd like um, data from attendees to start posting questions, and we can post answers as we go. Um, for time zones on the data form, I'm in Cambridge, UK, so I can overlap pretty much with everybody, whether you're in the USA or uh, India. Hopefully I can, I can be around and, and watching while you're working. Uh, if not, I will answer when I wake up in the next morning. Okay, that's the slides I have. Do we have any questions? Uh, Peter, um, I saw something uh, called a survival analysis. So what is that? Uh, that's, uh, for example, for cancer studies, it's looking at um, uh, uh, looking at uh, survival of patients and whether two groups of patients uh, have better survival statistics. The duty, over the duration of the treatment, uh, yes. the survival rate? Over, or over the course of the disease. Okay. And you compare that with what actually means? Uh, so you take two sets. You take patients with a particular type of treatment or patients with particular characteristics of okay. uh, disease and okay. look at survival figures for those two. And you basically get a curve that, that slaps off over time. Okay. But you have to have data uh, with, with survival information in it. So it probably doesn't apply for the COVID study. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard to find a good geo study to test on. Okay, okay. And uh, so, so that's a good thing that one can export all the data and everything. But how about importing? Like suppose uh, I come at uh, some interesting uh, COVID uh, data sets and I want to import that file into an existing server and uh, do the analysis uh, with whatever you have. So is it possible to do that? It is, yes. So for the clinical data, yeah, there are two input files. One is just a, a tab delimited file with uh, with one row per, per subject. Mm -hmm. And then there's a mapping file that maps the columns to the way they're going to be displayed within Transmart. The only okay, requirement sorry. is that every subject only, only appears once, so you don't have two lines the same. And then for the expression data, uh, the subject ID appears in a mapping file mapped to the sample ID. And then there's another, again, tab delimited file that just has the sample ID and the expression values for all the genes. And then there's and a third how... file. Typically, there's a third file that maps those uh, uh, maps each of those rows to a gene. It can be just the gene name. So it's very simple to map. Okay. And how difficult it is to import a file, or uh, will there be any help from Axiomedics for doing uh, doing such things? It will help to do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, basically, given those files, we can uh, set them up and and build an import script and load them. And then it will appear okay. as a study in uh, Transport. You okay. give it a new top level identifier, so your studies will be under some new name at the top level. So you'll be able to find them easily and compare the results you get to some of the other trials. Okay, good. Uh, so I saw somewhere you have mentioned about the IC50 curve also you can generate. So is it the same type of curve that you generate using the uh, different other software? Sorry, which? 
uh, the IC50 response curve. Oh, right. The um, dose response curve. Yeah. Again, I haven't tried that one very much because it's because, hard to find uh, data that, that fits. Yeah, what we use basically is the graphed uh, prism, right? That, that's the software yeah. people use and maybe uh, something else. But I don't know with uh, this one, also we can uh, get the same type of curve or uh, how to how to do the analysis for the dose response. Okay, you can have a look in Transart and see. I, I think for the COVID uh, studies, I don't see any data that's immediately applicable. But again, if you have some, some data you'd like to load up and try. Okay, sure, sure. But um, uh, in this case for the COVID, you might not be having much of the IC50, right? Uh, because most of them are in the clinical and all that, all the yeah, clinical the, translational the, data you have. And a lot of the studies are done on uh, monkey cell lines. And so it's more the response of the cell over time after exposure to virus. There's quite a large number of those, so it's very limited clinical data. It's more taking subsets over over time and comparing gene expression. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks so what much, Peter. What we're looking for is, yeah, given that, which new analyses could be put into Transmart, so you can export the data and or maybe use R or your other favourite packages to do some comparisons and analysis, and then we look to, to build some new analysis methods into Transmart. Uh, there's a lot of interest in anything based on time, time periods of infection or time courses of multiple visits to hospital or whatever. And that's higher on our list of things for um, the next version of Transmart next year. Okay, okay sounds great. I think I already know the answer to this, but I will ask it anyway. What safety measures are put in place to prevent people from accidentally putting uh, private health private health information into this? Um, okay, so all the studies that we're loading here are uh, coming out of Geo, so we're safe for this because this is all public data that you can just download from Geo in any case. Um, Data that's loaded into instances um, for hospitals that are using Transmart will be anonymized, um, typically anonymized to death so that nobody knows who the patients are. Uh, in some cases, they might have some identifier that they can track back. So if you've got data on patients and you're selecting it for trials, commonly with ITB2, you might be able to select patients and then go and say, I found this interesting set of anonymized patients. Can you contact them and recruit them for my trial? So at that point, you may be able to get hold of them. Uh, in the US, there are also some standards like um, HIPAA where you're not allowed to give the exact age for patients who are over a certain age. Um, I have seen some public Alzheimer's studies that break that because it looks like they've got the real age. You rather hope they've anonymized the ages in making their data public. But you don't take any further steps in transport if it's already public data. Because we, because we've been looking looking at doing uh, work with other countries, and we found that their view and handling of PHI is very different than the U.S. Yes, so also had problems across county uh, country borders with transport in the past where there was a project in one country and the transmart server within another country. And they had consent from patients, but it didn't include exporting the data to another country to put it into that transmart. So basically, instead of somebody running transmart for them, they had to go and run it themselves. It was a cancer trial as well, so there's no retrospective change of consent available. Yeah. Also once had a set of anonymized data um, for a total, it wasn't clinical data, but um, it was a set of, of data attached to individuals. And having identified eight out of 200, we realized it was in alphabetical order. And we managed to identify everybody. So okay. even anonymized data, if there's anything else in there that helps, you can get them out. 
So yeah, if your patient had anonymized IDs for alphabetical order, I would treat it as dodgy. Uh, certainly you'd want to remove all dates, especially date of birth. Um, I've seen TB trials um, in GEO, TB trials that have date of arrival in the UK. Um, that would be enough to identify someone. So that shouldn't be there, but it's in the public data. It's, it's kind of tricky. You might decide to just leave it out of Transmart. Yeah. So that okay. nobody sees it. <laughs> they can go to the geo link and download it themselves. Yeah. It's tricky. It's, it's really tricky making sure things are properly anonymized. And of course, with the RNA seq data, if, with geo, you often have access to the original RNA seq data, which has RNA sequences for all the gene variants for that individual. Again, it's, it's not fully anonymized in that sense. So all these individuals must have given their consent for their data to be put in a public repository. Okay. That makes sense. Thanks. But it's interesting to explore the various ways you can find individual information from Transmart, even, even when it's legally there. Okay, for those of you watching this on uh, on the video links, um, you'll find that we're later in the talk there with uh, contact addresses. So please do send emails or join the, the forums on Zendesk and send any messages if you have any further questions. And do come along on uh, Friday the 13th when we have another session at, uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So same time as this session. And, uh, We'll be covering uh, the data that's on the server, the kind of things you can do with it, and some of the limitations and some of the ways to get more information. So I'll show you some of the horrors of what you get from Geo if you download the original data. <laughs> You'll know what to expect. Um, but yeah, for a lot of the data analysis you'd like to do, it's actually quite useful to be able to look at the original source. Yeah.